okay uh, so welcome to uh, the third self assessment test that is uh, agrometrology crop and environment so basically we'll discuss most important 100 mcqs on agrometrology and how it is affecting our crop and environment uh, generally students neglect uh, this topic that is agrometrology because uh, nowhere it is mentioned in your jrf and srf syllabus and mostly in different agri competitive exam that is uh, for uh, the, the entrance exam that is for agronomy uh, mostly this topic is not there mentioned in the syllabus so students uh, they generally neglect this topic but this is one important topic because in agronomy we are basically dealing with uh, the crop and en its environment modification basically what whatever we are doing we are modifying the environment so that uh, plant will get enough resources uh, in correct time so that uh, the, the growth and productivity will be maximum right uh, so <clears throat> agro agrometrology is basically uh, a core branch of agronomy and uh, we'll discuss all uh, the, the important points or important questions we'll discuss one by one okay so the first question is which of the following is a rhizospheric factor uh, affecting the crop growth so generally crop growth and development and its productivity uh, is affected by the uh, crop plant itself that is called internal factor and in external factor you can say the rhizospheric environment that is the soil environment and the aerial environment that is atmospheric environment that affects the crop growth right so rhizospheric factor is nothing but the soil environmental factor so uh, among all this relative humidity is atmospheric factor or aerial factor rainfall is aerial factor acidity and salinity uh, that is a soil factor okay solar radiation is a aerial factor or atmospheric factor so rhizospheric factor here is soil acidity and soil salinity so they will affect directly the crop growth so correct answer will be c next one is which of the following does not represent climatic condition which one of the following does not represent climatic condition so you know uh, better that what is weather what is climate weather is the short term condition of the uh, the environment and in a uh, local area but whereas climate is pertaining to a la larger area and uh, like in india or it it may be uh, in a region okay and uh, climate is confined to the Uh, average weather condition uh, like in several years that means 30 35 years so basically <clears throat> here tropical is a climate tropical temperate subtropical polar these are climatic condition because that is constant almost but cloudy that is weather mediterranean okay so then temperate so here the question is does not representing the climatic condition so cloudy is a weather condition that is changing day to day 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 to day and uh, so tropical is a climatic situation mediterranean is a climate that is bhumadhya sagariya bolte hain and uh, that is mediterranean situation mediterranean climate and temperate is also a climate so which one here the question is which does not represent the climate situation so cloudy cloudy sunny windy these are weather parameters okay weather okay so right now it is cloudy but after few uh, minutes or after few hours it will be sunny so that is a, a temporary situation so that is weather condition <clears throat> that is not a climatic condition next question is the transitional layer between troposphere and stratosphere is so if we'll move outward from the uh, from the mean sea level the first layer is troposphere then there is a thin layer called tropopause then stratosphere then stratopause then mesosphere mesopause then thermosphere so uh in between troposphere and stratosphere that is uh, the the layer tropopause is present okay in between troposphere and stratosphere there is tropopause okay so interesting fact is that in this pause layer like like troposphere and uh, tropopause and uh, you know stratopause mesopause there is no change in temperature basically when you move in troposphere from, uh, to the higher altitude the temperature decreases that is we call a lapse rate right temperature de decrease in certain pattern so that is lapse rate but in tropopause the temperature is not decreased okay uh, when we move to the higher altitude then percentage of atmospheric mass that is confined within troposphere percentage of atmospheric mass that is confined within troposphere that is 85% okay percentage of total atmospheric mass uh, that is confined to troposphere that is 85% and uh, if you will see troposphere and stratosphere then it will be 99% okay 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज हुईच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट ट्रू फॉर स्ट्रेटोस्फ्योर हुईच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट ट्रू फॉर स्ट्रेटोस्फ्योर क्लाउडलेस लेयर येस इट इज ट्रू दैट्स वाई मोस्ट ऑफ द फ्लाइट दे मूव इन स्ट्रेटोस्फ्योर देन ओजोन लेयर इज फाउंड इन दिस लेयर दैट इज ट्रू इन टेम्परेचर इंक्रीजेस विथ इंक्रीज इन अल्टीट्यूड इन ट्रोपोस्फ्योर इट इज डिक्रीजेस इन विथ इंक्रीज इन अल्टीट्यूड बट इन स्ट्रेटोस्फ्योर टेम्परेचर इंक्रीजेस विथ इंक्रीज इन अल्टीट्यूड द इनकरेक्ट वन इज or not true that is all weather activities confined to this layer so all weather act activity confined to troposphere okay not stratosphere next question is ionosphere is present in between ionosphere is present between the mesosphere and thermosphere okay so there is a thin layer that is called ionosphere that present between mesosphere and thermosphere so basically this is the lower layer of thermosphere that is ionosphere uh, through which there is radio signal that reflect back and uh, that is transmitted okay so radio signal is transmitted uh, uh, by this ionosphere that is reflected by this ionosphere next one is on volume basis the concentration of carbon dioxide in the earth atmosphere during 2023 was so carbon dioxide you know it is increasing day by day due to industrialization due to uh, burning of fossil fuel due to deforestation carbon dioxide is increasing in the atmosphere carbon dioxide has a vital role in the atmosphere because it is uh, the primary substrate for photosynthesis or photosynthesis but as it is increasing the temperature because it has it is a global uh, warming gas okay so greenhouse gas basically so basically it has the trap uh, it has the capacity to trap solar radiation so it will it will hold that solar radiation in the earth so basically uh, the earth's temperature will increase so Uh, it is directly temperature is directly uh, involving or directly affecting different you know physiological and morphological factors different uh, on different organisms it is directly affecting so it is uh, it is bad actually if if the if it goes beyond the certain level so it is bad for the uh, environment for the biosphere so uh, on the volume basis uh, the current carbon dioxide concentration is somewhere around 420 ppm 420 ppm okay Next question is in which layer of the Earth's atmosphere internal space station and space shuttle generally orbits? In which layer of the Earth's atmosphere international space station and space shuttle generally orbits? That is, ionosphere. Mostly in ionosphere, uh, the international space station that orbits. Okay. Next one is the blue color of atmosphere and red color during sunrise and sunset are due to. the you can find the the atmosphere looks red during sunrise and sunset and in general the atmosphere is remaining blue so that is due to relay scattering so there are two types of scattering you can find in the atmosphere uh, one is relay scattering and mie scattering for uh, by relay scattering the atmosphere looks blue and uh, red and uh, that is uh, due to the smaller uh, you know atmospheric particles okay so there are different particles remain in atmosphere so if the, uh, the those particles are smaller than the light photon particles then that is relay scattering there will be relay scattering and the atmosphere will looks that uh, red color during the sunrise and sunset but mie scattering that is uh, responsible for white uh, you know when atmosphere remains white that is due to mie scattering that is due to larger particle size or larger diameter of the you know particle floating in the air and uh, the scattering from those larger particle that is called mie scattering next question is which of the following atmospheric gas absorb long wave radiation which of the following atmospheric gas absorb long wave radiation that is carbon dioxide so basically when solar radiation strikes in the earth that will uh, convert from short wave radiation or uv uh, or visible radiation to the long wave radiation that is infrared radiation and those long wave radiation are having less energy so the while reflecting back they will be absorbed by certain gases that is called greenhouse gases and uh, one of them is carbon dioxide and uh, other gases like methane and uh, methane and nitrous oxide there they also uh, contribute a lot towards the global warming next question is which of the following wind cell works in tropical region there are different wind cells works in global wind circulation so in tropical region basically the hartley cell works okay in tropical region basically tropical as well as subtropical region the hartley cell works okay 
so uh, there are other cell like feral cell then polar cell uh, these are the different cells of wind circulation global wind circulation in tropical cell you have to remember there are hardly cell works then the global wind circulation responsible for rain belt hurricanes of tropical desert jet stream that is also hardly cell so hardly cell is responsible for rain belt hurricanes of tropical desert and jet stream in case of tropical and subtropical area next question is which of the following cell plays a significant role in el nino phenomena which of the following cell that uh, plays significant role in el nino phenomena that is wacker cell okay what is el nino that is the uh, rise in temperature in the you know eastern pacific so if you'll we'll see the map global map so here if the, it is india uh, then uh, you can say this if this is india so there is you know bay of bengal then somewhere this there is pacific so if the eastern pacific remains warmer then what will happen the wind will blow from this indian ocean towards the eastern pacific so there will be negative effect on rainfall in india so that is called el nino phenomena so that is uh, you know uh, contributed by this wacker cell or that wind movement next question is the correct sequence of atmospheric layer is the correct sequence of atmospheric layer is that is you know troposphere then tropopause then stratosphere then stratopause then mesosphere then mesopause then uh, ionosphere so uh, the correct answer will be tropopause then stratopause then mesopause then ionosphere next question is find out the odd one from the following uh, first uh, one is atmospheric river silent spring tropical plume vapor surge so uh, among these if you will see the silent spring is a book but these are atmospheric phenomena tropical plume uh, atmospheric river vapor surge these are uh, atmospheric phenomena uh, but silent spring that is a book that is rich, uh, that was written by richard carson and uh, that was that book was uh, about the negative effect of pesticides on on different uh, organisms next question is which of the following is not an atmospheric phenomena which of the following is not an atmospheric phenomena uh, the options are tectonic speed a uh, shift maiden julian oscillation el nino indian Oce ocean dipole so atmosphere this tectonic shift that is not atmospheric phenomena that is responsible for the earthquake tectonic tectonic shift and uh, that is measured in richard scale you know earthquake that is a lithosphere phenomena or earth phenomena so all these other are atmospheric phenomena this el nino and indian ocean dipole that is responsible for the negative uh, rainfall that means drought situation in case of india okay next one is el nino is a spanish word means the boy child remains uh, that represents el nino means that is that is derived from a spanish word that means the boy child and it represents abnormal warming of western specific abnormal warming of western specific okay so with respect to india if you will see that is either so the earth is round so it may be eastern or western so it is uh, it is relative okay so abnormal warming of western pacific that is called el nino next one is which of the following arrangement is correct with respect to proportion of the photosynthetically active radiation out of the total solar radiation so solar radiation consists of different type of wave band that is uh, you know short wave long wave then visible radiation so and in visible radiation there are some photosynthetically active radiation also present so in which proportion of the solar band that the photosynthetically active radiation is mostly found that is the diffuse solar radiation followed by global solar radiation followed by direct solar radiation so in diffuse solar radiation somewhere around uh, 65 percent uh, <coughs> photosynthetically active radiation found then global radiation it is 50 percent then direct solar radiation that is 45 percent next question is which of the following is an effective sink for solar radiation sink means it has the capacity to store the solar radiation so basically uh, the ocean is the uh, potent sink for solar radiation ocean next one is and you can find this cloud land and snow they are effective uh, you know uh, reflector of solar radiation but ocean is the sink for solar radiation in which of the following method of heat transfer heat is a a transfer resulting due to the motion of the particle so heat transfer has different you know uh, different there, there are different principles of heat transfer conduction convection and radiation so conduction basically 
it is due to touching of the particle so from one particle that heat will uh, transfer to next particle then from next particle to next particle like that but in convection what happens the heated particle that will move that will move again the non heated particle that will move down then again heat then it will move again so the right answer will be convection but radiation it doesn't require the you know particle movement or any medium it doesn't require and it is the fastest fastest heat transfer method the next question is with respect to the rate of transfer of heat the correct sequence is so here we go then radiation followed by convection and followed by conduction next the value of adiabatic lapse rate uh, two types of lapse rate are there one is normal lapse rate another one is adiabatic lapse rate so norm in normal lapse rate what happens when we move to the higher altitude the temperature in in troposphere i'm talking the temperature decreases in a certain you know manner that is 3.5 degree fahrenheit for 1000 feet or 6.5 degree celsius per kilometer okay so that is normal lapse rate okay then adiabatic lapse rate means along with the uh, along with the you know air movement how the uh, temperature of the air is changes so that is 10 degree celsius per kilometer the adiabatic lapse rate the value is 10 degree celsius per kilometer then next question is thermal conductivity of soil is directly proportional to thermal conductivity of the soil is directly proportional to that is soil moisture content remember thermal conductivity of the soil that means the conductivity of the soil uh, to temperature that means how temperature is moving in the soil that is indirectly proportional to the porosity so uh, clay content that means higher the clay content higher the porosity will be so the again clay content uh, is also inversely proportional to the uh, no, conductivity then if we do tillage also there is more porosity so less will the con thermal conductivity so it is directly proportional to the soil moisture content next question is atmospheric pressure and uh, altitude relationship so basically what is altitude altitude means uh, from the main sea level how uh, what is the height of the place okay that is altitude so if we'll see atmospheric pressure means what is the pressure exerted per unit area or unit centimeter square or unit millimeter square uh, by the uh, that vertical air air mass okay so that is called atmospheric pressure so if we'll go upward then atmospheric pressure will be decline or that is inversely proportional if we go uh, to the upper layer or upper altitude then atmospheric pressure is, will be less so atmospheric pressure will be high in mean sea level and atmospheric pressure will be very low in the uh, top of the hill station then short burst of high speed wind is called short burst of high speed wind is called guest ghost or g u s t whatever you will uh, pronounce it that is called ghost Trade winds are trade winds are basically uh, either polar easterlies or tropical easterlies or sea breeze or land breeze. So they are basically tropical easterlies. Trade winds are basically tropical easterlies. So what is trade wind? Trade wind uh, is uh, the wind that is blown from where to where the subtropical areas or the tropic of Cancer or Capricorn to the equatorial region or thirty five degree uh, that. You know, so this is if we'll see the pressure belt. This is the equator that is doldrum. Then this is thirty-five degree north, and this is thirty-five degree south. So basically, polar uh, in 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 the equatorial region, the pressure is low, very low, because solar radiation, more solar radiation is insulated. So uh, wind will blow from uh, basically this thirty-five degree north and thirty-five degree south like this. Okay, so these are called easterlies because they are moving from east to west. So these are easterlies. These are called tropical easterlies. So these are called trade wind as well. Next question is the weight of water vapor present per unit weight of air, including water vapor. The weight of water vapor to weight of uh, at, uh, water vapor weight of water vapor present per unit of weight of air in the atmosphere. That is called specific humidity that is called specific humidity and absolute humidity is the uh, weight of uh, weight of water vapor in unit volume of air okay that is absolute humidity and relative humidity is the weight of water vapor uh, sorry the proportion of water vapor to the uh, the relative proportion of water vapor 
to which the actually it is needed to be saturated the atmosphere needed to be saturated that is relative humidity and that is most significant for uh, crop production point of view so among different uh, forms of uh, atmospheric humidity which is more significant uh, towards the crop ecology that is relative humidity okay next question is when the vapor pressure deficit is less than or equal to 1.5 pas kilopascal then the air is said to be when the vapor pressure deficit what is the vapor pressure deficit vapor pressure deficit is the deviation from the saturated vapor pressure so what is the saturated vapor pressure minus what is the actual vapor pressure if the deficit is less that means the air said to be humid air okay so if it is less than 1.5 kilopascal then that is called humid air if the, that is more than 2.5 kilopascal then that is called dry air next question is the size of precipitated water when they called raindrop having diameter the size of precipitated water when they called raindrop is having diameter that is 0.524 millimeter 0.524 millimeter okay next question is freezing fog is also known as freezing fog so there are different type of precipitation so freezing fog is also called rime okay freezing fog is also called rime freezing rain is also called glaze then mist are the water vapor if it is evaporating before reaching the ground that is called mist okay sleet are the you know solidified uh, you know ice particles that is falling on the ground when a parcel of air requires 50 gram of water vapor for its saturation what is the relative humidity if currently 40 gram of water vapor present in that air parcel so basically relative humidity is weight of water vapor present right now and how much water is needed to be saturated so 40 divided by 50 into 100 that is 80 percent so basically the relative humidity is 80 percent the intensity of rainfall when it is classified as heavy rain so intensity of rainfall when it is classified as heavy rain that is 7.6 to 50 millimeter per hour if the rainfall intensity is 7.6 to 50 millimeter per hour then that is classified as heavy rain then continuous rainless period of how many days is said to be dry spell in light soil so if in light soil the rain delays or there is rainless period so for somewhere around 10 days or more then that is called dry spell whereas in clay soil this is 15 days okay because clay soil can hold that moisture for longer period right next question is the part of rainfall intercepted by trees flows along the stem is known as the part of rainfall total rainfall that is uh, intercepted by tree flows along the stem and that is called canopy uh, not canopy that is called stem flow coefficient this is called stem flow coefficient so whatever uh, rainfall that is falling on the tree and that is moving through the stem that is called stem flow coefficient next question is homosphere consists of so broadly the atmosphere is uh, uh, divided into two category one is homosphere and heterosphere so homosphere basically consists of troposphere stratosphere and mesosphere troposphere stratosphere and mesosphere which of the following cloud is responsible for thunderstorm so there are two rain bearing clouds are there that is nimbostratus and cumulonimbus among these or between this the cumulonimbus cloud is generally called thunderstorm cloud or it is responsible for thunderstorm next one is the space uh, the spatial grid imd uses to record monsoon rainfall data and validate with the prediction is the spatial uh, grid that is used by imd for monsoon data validation that is one degree by one degree so the, that grid if the place is divided subdivided into different grids then that grid of imd that is one degree by one degree so next question is which of the following is not a correct value of solar constant which of the following is not a correct value of solar constant what is solar constant per minute in per second uh, per uh, uh, meter square how much solar radiation is uh, insulating so that is basically 1.94 calorie per centimeter square per minute that is correct then one point that is also called 1.94 langley per minute that is also correct and this 1353.98 watt per meter square that is also correct so the wrong value is 1353.98 joule per meter square so these three values just remember these are called solar constant okay next question is instrument that is used for measuring photosynthetically active radiation 
instrument that is used for measuring photosynthetically active radiation that is called quantum sensor what is photosynthetically active radiation that is 400 to 700 nanometer okay wavelength and most potent uh, among these is red band and blue band towards photosynthesis then soil thermal conductivity is directly proportional to the moisture content soil thermal conductivity we had already discussed so it is inversely proportional to the porosity and organic matter content and soil clay content as well it is directly proportional to the moisture content next question is which of the following is an alcohol in glass type thermometer that is minimum thermometer minimum therm in minimum thermometer you can find alcohol instead of mercury in the glass tube all other thermometer they consist mercury next question is whether a weather attribute which doesn't have significant direct impact on plant growth but an important parameter for weather forecasting that is atmospheric pressure okay so which of the following weather attribute that is not having directly impact direct impact on the plant growth that is atmospheric pressure all other weather attributes like atmospheric temperature atmospheric humidity and wind turbulence they directly affect the growth of the plant but atmospheric pressure that actually affect the the wind movement that affect the rainfall but that doesn't directly involve in or uh, directly affect the uh, plant growth next question is which thermometer are used for measuring atmospheric humidity so there are four types of thermometer is being used um, in the you know, Stevenson screen those are minimum thermometer maximum thermometer wet ball thermometer and dry ball thermometer Minimum thermometer is used for recording the minimum temperature in a day, maximum thermometer for maximum temperature in a day. But wet and dry bulb thermometer, they are used for measuring relative humidity by studying the relative humidity table and by recording the data, you can find the observation that is the actual relative humidity uh, you can find from the relative humidity table by knowing the wet and dry bulb thermometer data. The diameter of USWB class A open pan evaporimeter United States Weather Bureau class A open pan uh, evaporimeter the diameter is 122 centimeter sometimes they ask about the diameter of the different uh, instruments uh, that is installed in the uh, weather station and the height of the instrument as well so the diameter is 122 centimeter solar sunshine recorder the diameter is 60 centimeter next question is According to 1956 International Cloud Atlas of World Meteorological Organization, how many forms of clouds are there? There are 10 forms of cloud. Okay. Agricultural Meteorology Division of IMD was established in Agricultural Meteorology Department or that is Division of Agrometeorology that was established in 1932. 1932. So IMD when it was established? 1975. Okay. And Agricultural Meteorology Division that is 1932. In synoptic chart, what does shared inside small circle means? In synoptic chart, so synoptic charts are you basically used to study the you know representation there, basically representation of the different weather attribute, weather element. So it it represents inside small circle if there is shading that represents amount of cloud. Okay, only shading that is amount of precipitation, but uh, inside circle then that is called cloud. A long range weather forecasting that is useful for. So there are different type of weather forecasting are there like so, uh, now casting, short range weather forecasting, medium range weather forecasting and long range weather for forecasting. So basically long range weather forecasting by knowing the weather we can choose our cropping pattern wisely on which crop to take that we can choose. Which of the following method of weather forecasting is suitable for both short and long range forecasting of weather. So there are different methods of weather forecasting like synoptic method, statistical method, numerical method. So, which among these is useful for short as well as long range weather forecasting that is statistical measures. So, here we are taking different regression models based on which we do the weather forecasting that is useful for both short and long range weather forecasting. Then uh, synoptic method that is useful for uh, short range weather forecasting and numerical method medium range weather forecasting. Then the principle of cloud seeding was first discovered by prince principle of cloud seeding that is that was first discovered by Vincent Schaeffer Vincent Schaeffer for the seeding of warm cloud which of the following chemical is used for the seeding of warm cloud generally uh, the sodium chloride is being used and for seeding of uh, cold cloud that is silver iodide and dry ice is being used you have to remember this the first person who contributed to climate classification was the first person 
to contribute to the climate classification was d candole the first person who classified the climate that is d candole then climate classification that was most suitable for agriculture was given by troll climate classification that was most suitable for agriculture that was given by troll next question is who proposed the climate classification based on temperature and precipitation effectiveness index that is thorn thwaite thorn thwaite uh, so most of the time they are being asked uh, this climate classification is the main question in the, in the exam so you have to remember which classification is proposed by whom and uh, what were the pra parameters they, they have been taken in that climate classification then according to the modified troll classification that is used by ikrisa ikrisa actually used the modified troll classification uh, most of the geographical area based on that classification most of the geographical area in india falls under dry semi arid dry semi arid next one is the climate classification adopted by aicrpda that is all india coordinated project on dry land agriculture aicrpda that is moisture deficit index mdi moisture deficit index so mostly icrpda uh, that climate classification done by icrpda that they follow moisture deficit index in which five year plan planning commission divided india into 15 agro climatic zone in seventh five year plan the planning commission of india delineated india into 15 agro climatic zone which icr organization delineated india into 20 agro ecological region that is nbss and lup the headquarter is in nagpur and this is one of the six national bureau okay nagpur so this nbss and lup delineated india into 20 agroecological regions which of the following agroclimatic zone is also known as oil seed zone so there are 15 agroclimatic zones as we were discussing so oil seed zone is basically gujarat plain and hill zone is also known as oil seed zone okay coconut zone this is island zone is called coconut zone then western uh, you know western coast and plain zone that is called Western Ghat and Plain Zone that is called the Orange Zone. Okay, Gujarat Plain and Hill Zone is also known as Oil Seed Zone. So most of the oil seed that that uh, that is being grown in this zone, then this climatic zone. Next one is <coughs> the bioclimatic law that is that was proposed by Hopkin in 1928. Explain relationship of crop production activity and crop morphological development with all these like latitude, longitude and altitude so the right answer will be all so basically hopkin proposed that if uh, the latitude uh, is increasing one degree longitude is it increasing four degree and altitude is increasing 120 meter okay then the growth uh, is shifted or, or it is delayed okay up to five days next question is which of the following condition favors deficit rainfall in india which of the following condition favor deficit rainfall in india that is el nino and negative southern oscillation index both contribute deficit or both favors deficit rainfall in india next question is wind speed that is favorable for winnowing operation what is winnowing so after threshing you have to remove the uh, the bran or that may be the cover outer covering of the grain or from the actual uh, grain that you will consume so that is called winnowing and that is that process for that process wind flow that is needed that is at least 15 kmps 15 km per hour next one is the average albedo value of earth what is albedo that is the uh, uh, proportion of reflected radiation or percentage of reflected radiation from the total incoming radiation or insulated radiation uh, and in in case of earth's surface that is 0 0.3 that means 30 percent of the uh, radiation reached to our surface that's reflected back without losing its quality of course next question is feasible cropping in a uh, system which uh, when the length of growing period is less than 75 days that is perennial vegetation okay that is perennial vegetation so if the rainfall is less the perennial crop that means uh, they required very less uh, less water or rainfall that and they said and they regrowth again in 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 the when they get the rainfall that is perennial vegetation then monocropping somewhere if the lgp is between 75 to 120 days then monocropping then 120 to 180 or 150 days then double cropping you can take then more than 180 days then you can go for triple cropping okay like that okay. so 
it is like that so if the lgp is more that means uh, the moisture availability in the soil that is more and if the moisture availability is more then we can go for multiple cropping next question is the solar radiation band which is having thermal and photoperiodic effect but has less significance in photosynthesis the solar radiation band which is having thermal and photoperiodic effect but has less significant in photosynthesis that is which band infrared radiation okay so infrared radiation having photoperiodic effect and it is having thermal effect because infrared radiation has more you know captured by the uh, the the greenhouse gases and they will provide thermal effect or it will warm the atmosphere but uv radiation that escape to the atmosphere because that is a very short range and high energetic radiation visible radiation that is used in photosynthesis okay microwave radiation used for climate study because uh, they can penetrate through cloud and all and atmosphere so they are mainly studying uh, used for studying uh, or remote sensing they are being used then the correct order of crop with respect to their light extinction coefficient the correct order of crop with respect to light extinction coefficient so what is light extinction coefficient you can find it in uh, in beer's law that is uh, i is equal to i0 e to the power minus k l a i that is beer's law so this e is actual the light extinction coefficient so what is the proportion of the light that is interfering or that is moving or the intensity that is moving towards the lower part of the canopy in a crop so that is basically the higher for or highest for maize then followed by sorghum followed by rice next question is which of the following is a day neutral crop which of the following is a day neutral crop that is cotton cotton is a day neutral crop rice is a short day crop wheat groundnut is also a short day crop and uh, wheat is a long day crop which of the following crop is period bound but not season bound period bound but not season bound that means day neutral okay so cotton pea maize these are all day neutral crop and all are period bound but not season bound you can you can grow them in any season of the year next question is solar radiation utilization efficiency of a crop under field condition is solar radiation use efficiency of a field crop in the field condition that is 1 to 2% how many calories of solar energy is utilized for production of 1 gram dry matter that is 3700 to 4100 calorie so for 1 gram dry matter this much uh, calorie is used that is called conversion efficiency conversion efficiency that is also called conversion efficiency then uh, next question is cardinal temperature of a crop does not include cardinal temperature means the minimum temperature optimum temperature and maximum temperature required by a crop growth okay that is cardinal temperature so which one does uh, it excludes that is base temperature base temperature is the uh, minimum temperature below which there is no growth that is base temperature so cardinal temperature include all this uh, okay minimum temperature optimum temperature and base, maximum temperature and base temperature is that temperature below which there is no growth of the crop you can find next question is the correlation between relative humidity and disease spreading it is highly or positively correlated so the more the relative humidity over the canopy the more chance of uh, the disease spreading like likewise uh, when we store the grains in in any storage area we generally exclude the we generally dry the seed sample or grain then only we store it because otherwise there will be more disease in infestation in the stored grain next question is the dependability of rainfall is calculated at what percentage of probability that is 75% probability the dependability of rainfall is calculated in 75% probability next question is in concept of growing degree day the relationship between development and temperature is the concept of growing degree day what is that concept growing degree day is equal to summation of t max plus t mean by 2 minus t base temperature this is growing degree day so it is helpful in uh, predicting the harvesting time and uh, choosing the correct time of sowing and uh, here the relationship is said to be linear which is a negative drawback or limitation of this law next question is in calculation of photothermal unit the gdd is multiplied with in calculation of due to this limitation that is the growing degree day and the growing season is linear that is a drawback so scientists what they did they multiplied this growing degree day with with the day length for more accuracy okay 
so ptu that is photothermal unit is equal to growing degree day multiplied with day length next question is the increase in rate of biochemical reaction with 10 degree celsius increase in temperature is called okay so basically uh, when there is any enzymatic action there are the different factors affecting that enzymatic action uh, the most important factor is substrate concentration so uh, here in case of uh, biochemical reaction the substrate plays a major role and other factors like temperature also affect the biochemical reaction so uh, when there is 10 degrees celsius increase in any biochemical reaction that is the rate of reaction increases two to three times that is called respiratory quotient or quotient 10 okay this is called quotient 10 okay this q10 represented as q10 value Using of which of the following photoreceptor, using of which of the following photoreceptor plant receives UVB solar radiation and the absence of which plant becomes more susceptible to that UVB solar radiation that is UVR8. This is one the name of the photoreceptor that plant does have and it actually trap this UVB radiation and uh, the plant become resistant to UVB radiation. If this uh, acceptor is not there or photoreceptor is not there then plant will become susceptible to that radiation then uh, which day is celebrated as world meteorological day which day is celebrated as world meteorological day that is 23rd march so 23rd march is celebrated as world meteorological day next one is what was the theme of world meteorological day 2023 the theme was the future weather climate and water across generation so when questions are asking like this the water day theme the earth day theme meteorological day theme you have to remember the current uh, year and uh, and the previous year what was the theme for that particular day you have to remember this then the headquarter of world meteorological organization headquarter of world meteorological organization that is situated in geneva when does this world meteorological organization was established it is 1973 so and the headquarter is in geneva the headquarter of imd is located at headquarter of imd is located at new delhi so initially it was established in kolkata during 1975 when it was established it was established in kolkata then shifted to simla then again shifted to pune then right now it is the headquarter is in new delhi who is the current director general metrology of dgm of imd uh, dr mrityunja mahapatra is the current dg or director general metrology of imd indian meteorological department next question is the line connecting the line connecting places receiving equal amount of rainfall for particular period that is called iso height so basically this is an imaginary line connecting the places having equal rainfall in a particular time period that is iso height next question is the study of cloud is called the study of cloud is called nephology study of cloud is called nephology then the concept of response farming was proposed by the concept of response farming was proposed by stewart the concept of response farming is proposed by stewart then when did imd started weather service for farmers broadcasted by all india radio in the form of farmer weather bulletin so in the form of farmer weather bulletin by all india radio the imd started weather service for farmer uh, during 1945 in the year 1945 intergovernmental panel on climate change was established by unep and world meteorological organization in the year 1988 ipcc was established in 1988 next question is the global warming potential of nitrous oxide is how many times than that of carbon dioxide that is 298 times 298 and that means if uh, one uh, you know 298 uh, let's say mole of carbon dioxide traps whatever amount of solar radiation one molecule of nitrous oxide can even one mole of nitrous oxide can even trap that much solar radiation so nitrous oxide is more potent to trap the solar radiation or increase the warming process of the earth and if you say methane that is 25 times that that of carbon dioxide next question is which of the following is not true in respect to the effect of high relative humidity with respect to high relative humidity of the crop on the crop what is not true reduce evapotranspiration that is correct because if humidity is high then the, the dpd diffusion pressure gradient or the transpiration pool will be low reduction in carbon dioxide if if transpiration is less then the stomata will close then the carbon dioxide cannot be you know exchanged 
then uh, reduction of water and nutrient uptake of course if there is transpiration less then transpiration pool is less the uh, water and nutrient uptake will be low reduced heat load heat load will increase not reduce because uh, by transpiration evaporation is, is uh, causes cooling transpiration also causes cooling so heat will not dissipate to the atmosphere so this will be the correct answer next quality quantity and intensity quality quantity intensity and duration and direction are the important characteristic of which of the following weather element so in temperature you cannot find the quality quantity is quantity of temperature is there but quality of temperature what does it mean precipitation yes quantity is there intensity is there duration is there but direction is precipitation and quality of precipitation what does it mean wind again direction is there intensity is there quantity is also there direction is also there duration is also there but quality of wind that doesn't mean anything solar radiation so this is the correct answer solar radiation the quality of solar radiation means the wavelength okay then quantity means the intensity then uh, yeah quantity means the quantity or intensity means the intensity or of the solar duration of the solar radiation all these affect the solar radiation uh, with respect to yield or crop growth okay next one is which of the following instrument is placed inside double dimension screen and used for measuring relative humidity continuously that is hygrograph or barograph okay that is used inside a uh, double dimension screen uh, to measure the relative humidity of the atmosphere continuously next question is the tallest instrument in an agro meteorological observatory the tallest instrument in an agro meteorological observatory that is sunshine recorder sunshine recorder is somewhere 0.3.38 meter okay stevenson screen uh, is 1.22 meter and uh, anemometer 3.08 meter and rain gauge i think 45 centimeter okay so sunshine recorder that is 3.38 meter next question is what is the unit of cloud cover cloud cover what is the unit that is octa okay not is the unit of wind speed millimeter hg that is pressure millimeter per day you can say rainfall next question is the headquarter of national remote sensing center headquarter of national remote sensing center nrsc that is in hyderabad which of the following is not a rain bearing cloud see nimbus wherever there is nimbus that is rain bearing cloud so cumulonimbus and nimbostratus they are rain bearing cloud whereas cirrus is the highest cloud that is not rain bearing rainfall warning provided by national weather forecasting uh, center when rainfall intensity is 15 to 33 mm in 1 hour expected to continue for next 2 hour that is uh, that is which type of warning orange warning okay so beyond that that will be red warning below that that will be uh, green warning or that okay orange red you, you know all this warning during the rain uh, rainfall yellow warning orange warning warning then red warning so orange warning seems to be like when the rainfall intensity is 15 to 30 mm in 1 hour and expected to continue for next 2 hours that is orange warning beyond that that is red warning okay the modern classification of cloud was proposed by luke howard the modern classification of cloud that was the 10 uh, cloud classification that was proposed by luke howard and based on luke howard classification world meteorological organization actually classified the cloud in 1956 from the cloud atlas who is regarded as the father of agro meteorology in india that is l a ramdas l a ramdas is regarded as the father of agro meteorology in india the climate that extends beyond 2.25 meter of soil surface that is called ma macro climate or mezo climate all other like confined to the crop ecosystem that is the micro climate or local climate or topo climate that is said and macro climate is beyond 2.5 meter from the uh, soil surface so these are uh, 100 mcqs from uh, different sector of agro meteorology and how they are related with crop production uh, i hope you got some uh, interesting facts and uh, some concepts well if you have still any doubt from agro meteorology you can uh, uh, you can ask me in the comment section i'll clarify them so keep studying and keep signing till then bye bye